We are going to read from the book of Acts chapter 10. And today we are speaking about Christian growth or Christian maturity. And when we, we talk about Christian maturity or Christian growth, it is important, it is vital. Because there is a message that God has given me, and I mentioned it last week somewhere, concerning uh, authority. And uh, the Lord had taught my heart that as you continue growing in Christ, you gain authority over some areas in your life. The more you grow, the more authority you get. Because you find the Bible says that uh, the disciples, there was a day Jesus came and called the disciples and said, I have given you power and authority that you may go against all demons and you may cure all diseases. And this is after Jesus had stayed with the disciples for a long time. Uh, he was able to give them authority. And so as we grow in Christ, as we mature in Christ, uh, we can be given authority. Because you remember the example that Jesus gave, a parable. He said there was a master uh, who left ten minas. He gave to the ten servants and said, I'm going to a far part of country, make use and invest in this mina. And the Bible says when the first came before the master, he said, your mina has earned ten more. And the Bible says, and the master said, you shall have authority over ten cities. And so that tells you that if we continue being faithful in the things of God, if we continue being faithful in our walk with Christ, we add to our authority and our effectiveness in our walk here in the earth. But today I want us to look unto a man in the book of Acts. You know the book of Acts is a book that speaks about the early church. And when Jesus left, he left the mandate to the apostles so that they may spread his message. And they were supposed to preach the name of Jesus and the kingdom. And so as you continue in the book of Acts, you start seeing a church be, the, the church being planted, the church starting to spread. But there is one person that we have talked about so many times, and I know you have in, even read about him. His name is Colnerius. Colnerius was a different man because in the book of Acts, he is the first Gentile to receive the gospel. And you find that Colnerius being a Gentile, uh, he, was, he, was, he was not even supposed to come near the temple of the Jews. He was supposed to pray outside there. But though he is a Gentile, we find some qualities in him that attract God towards him we can be able to grow and mature in Christ. Because when you come to the book of uh, Acts chapter 10, you find him there, a man who was just in the Roman army. The Bible says he was a centurion. A centurion was a man who was in authority. He, he had over a hundred men under him. And so being in that position as Cornelius, he was, you know, the more you are in power, the more people resist the gospel. So you know that. But Cornelius, though he, he had a lot of authority, he was appointed by the Roman government uh, to become a, a centurion, yet he was a different man. He had a different spirit. And he knew that the way he lived could attract God towards him. And it is important to know that we have to create an atmosphere around our lives so that God can come and work within our lives. And so we are going to read from Acts chapter 10, from verses 1. If you are there, let us read. The Bible says, There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of what was called the Italian Legiment. Verse 2. Now let us hear about the qualities that he had. He had matured. He had grown to a point heaven could not ignore him. There is a way you can live here in the earth to a point the heavens will not ignore you. But it, is, it does not come just naturally. It does not come just like that for you to mature. You have to start a course within your life to live a good life. And verse 2 says, he was a devout man. Number one, we see Cornelius having something that makes the heavens notice him. The Bible says he was a devout man. He was a man who was devoted. In other words, devotion. I'm a devoted. He is a man who every time he thought about God, he, he had a religion within himself. 
that when I wake up in the morning, I have to think about God. Devotion is about even reading the word of God. It is about going into the scriptures. And I remember there was a one, one man, friend of mine, his name is Michael Smith. He taught me on having devotion before God every day. Before then, I used to read the Bible when I feel like reading the Bible. I used to, uh, to pray when I felt like praying. But when I met this man, he taught me something. He told me, Benson, you need to be reading four chapters of the Bible every day. I told him that is too much. I have already read the whole Bible once in a while. He told me, no, I want you to train yourself. I want you to become a devoted man. A man who is always in the presence of God. He told me you need to be reading four chapters of the Bible. I told him that is too much. Reading one chapter sometimes is very boring because you find those genealogies. And this person begat this and this person begat this. He told me no. I will, be, uh, I will become like a master to you. I will disciple you so that you may understand and you may learn how to become a devoted person. And I began four chapters of the Bible. And I started four chapters. I will read two chapters in the Old Testament and two chapters in the New Testament. At first, it was very hard because I had to wake up at 5.30 to begin my reading. But eventually, the more I read, the more I became deeper into the things of God. The more I continue reading into the word of God, the more I gained knowledge concerning God. If you remember the eunuch, the eunuch who had come from Ethiopia. The Bible says he was the, the treasurer, he was the master. He was given uh, the, the room, I, I mean the office of, of, of treasury. So he was quite an influential man. It is like today being given the, the post of the, uh, the finance minister. And the Bible says when he was riding on a chariot, he was reading the scriptures. And heaven noted that he was a devoted man. When you are reading the Bible, when you become devoted, and so in times of devotion, we can meet God in those areas. How many of you read the scriptures? How many of you only hold the Bible when it comes to the day of Sunday? That is when you get your Bible and you come to the house of God. According to the Bible, the Bible says that Cornelius was a devoted man. He was a devout man. And so every one of us, we shouldn't expect every Sunday that we are going yes to listen to the word of God, I know the pastor shall read the scriptures to us. It should be that every day, you might not be like me that was reading four chapters a day, but you can read a chapter a day in the morning. Become devoted. Become devoted. How many of us can take time to read the scriptures in the morning? How many of us can take time before you go to bed? I remember, let me give this testimony. I remember the way, you see the way mothers usually read stories to their children before they sleep. They get a storybook. I remember my mom used to read us. I remember he, she, she read me the story of Saul, the sto story of David. Before I was about 10 years old, I knew the book of Genesis. I knew all these patriarchs. How are to what Yamboni Wakuba, the men of faith? Because every day before I slept, my mom had to read the Bible to me. Every day. He, sometimes she could take even an hour reading to us. And then the Bible got into me. I, I, I had not yet read the Bible, but when it came to do CRE, I used to get 90 something because I know the history. I, I know because my mom usually reads the scriptures to me every day. How many mothers do we have here? Instead of complaining in the evening, instead of beating your child and telling them, go to sleep, can you take the Bible and read to them? Or give them the story of David. Give them the story of Saul. The Bible says Cornelius was a devoted man. He knew how to do the things of God. Every day he was there. Every day. It, it might be considered religious, but there is nothing bad being religious to the things of God. So the Bible says, number one, verse two, he was a devout man and one who feared God with all his household. Number two, there is something that Colnerius had that other Gentiles did not have. There is something that Colnerius had that other Jews did not have because we don't find anywhere in the scriptures where God sends Peter to a, to a Jew. 
But why does God send Peter to a, a Gentile, a, a man who is not even supposed to come to the temple of God? The Bible says, number two, he feared God with all his household. He knew that salvation is not only for me. It is for me, my wife, and my children. Hey, I remember there was a time my, one of my nieces came to my house. She was living with me. And when she came, uh, every time she liked watching movies. You know the teenagers, they like watching movies. But when the movie is ikopare juu kabisa time yetu ya kuenda kulala inafika. Ninamwambia now you need to put off uh, the television. We are going to take time. Number one, we are going to pray. We are going to sing some few songs. And then you are going to give us the word. She will look at me and say, I'm not the pastor. <laughs> you are the pastor. I tell her, no, reading the word is not for pastors. It is also for you, teenagers. And so she'll be, the first day, she'll be very unhappy uh, with Amefurisha Mashavu. But I know, I will fear God with my household. I wanted to teach her. I wanted her to learn that it is good to know God at her age. It is good to fear God. Movies are good, yes. You shall watch them. But amongst your busy schedule, you need to fear God. Hey, praise Jesus. And the first day I told her, now today you are the one who is going to lead us with two songs of worship. All the time she's like worshiping and I worship ile akikata. Ili tumalize haraka, arudi kwa kipindi. Nika muambia, aka, aka worship haraka, alafu wakaanza maombi. Maombi aliomba. Thank you Jesus for this day, for protecting us. In Jesus name we are going to sleep. Amen. All of us said amen. I told her, those are not prayers. You are joking around. She said, Uncle, no, I told her, we are going to begin again. She told me, I don't know how to pray. I told her, I'm going to teach you when you are praying, I will give you words. So she began. She says, thank you, Jesus. I tell her, yeah, thank you. Tell, adore him. Oh, I adore you. Tell him about the mountains and the oceans. Oh, thank you, God, for the mountains, the ocean. Tell him about the creation. Oh, thank you. She, she, na muangalia. Kama, na anakasirika sahi, anasema, oh, thank you, Jesus, for the mountains. Na now, confess your sins and our sins. And, and, and I said, my oh, father, forgive us uh, for the sins that we have done. Yeah, and, and also for the sins that all of us have done. And now ongeza. Ninamuambia, now say thanksgiving because I was teaching her. If you, ha you have a child, teach her the prayers that we call acts. A for adoration. C for confession. T for thanksgiving. And S for supplication. That is when you pray for others. So I told her now, thank God. She started thanking God. Thank you, God, for today. I told her, thank God, because of your age. Oh, thank you, God, for my age. I told her, thank God, because you are about to go to school. Oh, thank you, God, because I'm about to go to school. Can you thank God, because today he gave us food to eat? She says, oh, thank you, God, because of the bread, the milk, and even everything that we have here. And then I tell her, now go to supplications. Can you pray for a girl that you know did not do well? in school. Can you pray for a girl that you know that was sick? I taught her. By the time she stayed with me, every time, sometime I forget to go to pray, she tells me, and we have not prayed today. We have not sung today. Because I learned to fear God with my family. Wewe mze, you are a leader, yes. You are paying the house. Also teach your family to fear God in your house. It is not watching Nigerian movies from morning to evening. If they can watch Nigerian movie for two hours, they can spare 30 minutes to go before God. Teach your family to fear God. You have not prayed in the house. By the way, the Bible says you should pray in your house. But you as a muse, you are good at providing, yes. But are you good at taking an opportunity of leading your people into the things of God? Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 1. Now, O Israel... Listen to the status and the judgments which I teach you to observe, that you may live and go in and possess the land which the Lord your God, the, of the God of your father, is giving you. The God of your fathers is giving you. And so here Moses says to the nation of Israel, listen, take heed, because there are some things that God wants to give you. You have to listen to me what I'm telling you. And now verse 9 he says this, only take heed to yourself and diligently keep yourself 
lest you forget the things your eyes have seen, lest you have departed from, from, from your heart all the days of your life, and teach them to your children and your grandchildren. Here Moses says, listen, do not forget the things that you have seen God do in your life. And you need not only to forget them, but also you need to teach them to your children and children. And so that tells you you have a responsibility of bringing the fear of God into your house. That is maturity. It is not only you that you are supposed to be saved. Yes, I'm a good, I am good in prayer. I'm good in reading the word of God. I'm good in going to the church. I'm good in going to the things of God. But does your family do the same? Do your children do what you are doing? Hey, praise Jesus. Moses said, remember, take heed to yourself. Lest you forget the things that your God has done to you. The things that you have seen. Make sure you teach them to your children and your grandchildren. Hey, I remember there was a time we had a lot of problems and myself and my sister were taken to live with my grandmother. And when we went there, I had come from a place called Voi. And in Voi, because my mom used to work in a place called Savo, and so she left us with a maid. And when she was not around, we had the freedom of not going to church. Because the maid, our maid, we think she was, she had some witch, witchcraft she was doing because we could wake up at night and see her doing some funny things at night. She never took us to church. And so, because of not going to church for a long time, we used to go sometimes, once in a while. Later, we were taken from Voi and we were taken to Nyahururu to live with my grandmother. And when I went there, I remember the same spirit I had because I used to spend so much time watching movies. Zira movies in Ayakwa Kwa Uwanja. So when I went to Nyahururu, I was speaking the Swahili of the Swahili of coastal area. I could not speak Kikuyu. I could not speak anything else. My only job was to talk about movies. Every time, nasema Rambo. Rambo, Rambo, Rambo. Rambo alikuwa na bunduki. So I was his story. I used to give those stories. But my grandmother used to go to a church very far. A place called Ngano by then, by, by those days. And because it was very far, I used to go with her halfway and return back home. I tell her I'm not going any further. I'm tired. And I'll cry and I'll make sure nina garagara kwa, kwa vumbi, nina kuwa na uchafu, nina tupa mateke, and I then go home. Then my grandmother learned a trick that she used to bring me into the house of God. You know what she did? Uh, because of being in Geshagi, there is no bread. You eat ugali in the morning. There is no Mandazi. Mandazi is only in the nearest, near town. And that, the nearest town was Ngano, about a couple of kilometers. So my grandfather, my grandmother used to come and tell me, today, if you take me to church, the Mandazis you have not eaten for the whole week, I'm going to buy for you two of them. So my grandmother will give me the Kiondo to carry. And I will be behind her going to Ngano to church. But I'll reach a point and tell grandma, I'm too tired. I cannot go anymore. She'll come and tell me, do you remember the Mandazi? I'll tell her, grandma, okay, I'll continue going on this journey and I'll be very fast walking. And that is how I entered into the house of God. That is how I knew Jesus. Because I had a grandmother who was willing to bring that Jesus to a grandchild. And that is what the Bible has told us. That you need to teach the things of God to your children and to your great-grandchildren. If you have not had an effect in your great-grandchildren, if you are here, you have not yet done what God wants us to do. Hey, praise Jesus. From there, that is when I knew about God. It was a mainstream church. But yet, they taught me about Jesus. Listen, let me tell you something. In Voi, I used to rokota the cigarettes that... Na ni makosa sana hiyo wazee kuangusha hiyo. Nilikuwa naokota. Najificha mahali. But when I go to the house of God when I went with my grandmother, today I could be a smoker. I could be a drunkard. But there was a grandmother who was willing to use mandazis to get me into the house of God. What can you use to bring the children, your children and your great-grandchildren to the house of God?
it is better. The missionaries, for them to be effective in this country, they usually say in history that when you came to the church, they used to give you clothes for you to come into the house of God. And so when our great-grandparents came to church because they would be given children, uh, they would be given clothes, today we come to church with our own free will. Because there were men and women from England, from Europe, from US, who knew how to bring people into the house of God. Can you turn to somebody and tell them, God is for you and your children and your great-grandchildren. May it be so in the name of Jesus. Hey, may it be so in the name of Jesus. Your great-grandchildren shall say we know God because of that man. Hey, you have children who say there is one thing that my parents gave me, though they gave me education, though they gave me all these things, but there is one thing they gave me far much beyond education, and that is knowing Jesus in my life. May you give your children Jesus. May you fear God with your household. And that is what the Bible says, called Nereus. Can you go back there to Acts chapter 10? The Bible says he was a different man. He did not only fear God, him alone, but he feared God with his household. Ah, yeah. The Bible says, we are reading from verse 2 for those who have just come in. We are reading Acts chapter 10 from verses 1 and 2. The Bible says he was a devout man, one who feared God with all his household, who gave alms generously to the people. This is the third thing. You can never mature in the things of God if you're not a giver. Let me say that again. We will never mature in the things of God if we are not givers. Praise Jesus. If you have a hardness of heart, me I remember mine was broken this way. I was in high school. And I remember one pastor. By then, I didn't have any suit. I used to live with just t-shirts. I used to admire people who dressed up, who came to church with suits. I remember one pastor gave me about four suits. Very beautiful. That pastor was short like me. So I was able to fit on his suits. They were very nice. I remember one was purple. I remember all of them. Another one had stripes. I was very happy that day when I carried four suits home. I remember now in the church, I will be coming with a suit and a tie. I was the happiest man around. When I arrived in, in our house, the first thing was to dress up in those suits. I could wear the purple suit. I go and show it around. How do I look? Because those were my first suits. I had never had suits before. And so I iron them properly. I put them in the, in the drawer. On Sunday, I was wearing the purple suit. Nicely dressed, I came to the church. Here in CFF, I came. By then, we were in Menengai, up there. I came with a, with a suit. Very looking good. Everybody was like, hey, today, you are looking nice. And by the way, it is good to appreciate people when you see them looking good. Do not be like jealousy. Just say, you are looking good. And so, everybody was like, Ben, let me tell you. By the way, one man told me, you look like Maurice Seruro. They started calling me Seruro. I was very happy. Everywhere I go with those suits, I could not even button them. By the way, I was a, a bit heavy. I could not button them. I used to walk in the church. One brother used to call me, here comes Cerulo. For the first time, I was called Maurice Cerulo. Because of the suits, I was very happy. I was the happiest man around. But when I was in school, because I was still in school, my mom took all those suits when I was not around. I will not tell you what happened, but later I came. Prepared on Saturday, went to my drawer. Now I'm going to take the other one that has stripes. The cerulo of these days. Because I have received all this attention with these suits. I go to the drawer, there are no suits. I think maybe my mom took them to be cleaned somewhere. So I'm like, uh, ulipereka wapi dobigani nikienda ni chukue suti maana na Sunday. Akaniambia no, siku peleka adobi. Nikamuliza ziku wapi. Akaniambia, wajua wewe unamoyo mugumu. I'll teach you the hard way. I'll teach you the hard way. Because I'm bringing up a child that is so selfish and hard giving out. So I told him, how, where did you take them? I gave them to so and so. Vijana wale huwa tuna 
wananiita walikuwa nimewatisha unajua ni wa age unatisha wale vijana mko nao amepatia hao vijana wawili two of them i told mom you know what hivyo umepeana suti zangu leo leo nikiwapata wakiwa nazo watavua nikamwambia na utanijua mimi kwanza nimwambia siku hiyo naitwa <laughs> you know <laughs> I, i had been told jina uh, my name is nganga my last name my my name nilikuwa nimeambiwa nganga ni kukauka nga ile kukauka kabisa sasa nikamwambia today you know i'm that hard you know i'm the man in this house watavua suti i came to the church and sikuwa nimekaa sana one of those guys was wearing my purple suit ameva anazunguka kama vile nilikuwa nazunguka serulo mimi nimevaa t-shirt anazunguka in the church i could not pray people were told to close your eyes i could not close my eyes i was looking unto that young man planning on how i'm going to take him behind the church and make him give me my suit in the church lakini nikasikia baada ya nikakaa kwa kanisa nikasema sitamnyang'anya nitamnyang'anya another day that is how i started learning giving my things to people if you don't mature in giving you don't mature as a christian and that is why in the bible you find so many places where god tells the people before i give you this abram before i give you this do this and this before, you have a son yes i have given you a son give him back to me because in giving we mature hey, praise jesus and it is giving in the church and giving to the poor people who are desperate people who who have many needs before you reach a point of giving where you mature in giving you are still a long way in maturity but when we start giving we learn how to give when we are young when we are old we learn how to give definitely we mature in that area let me read another verse there the bible says in verse 2 Now we are in the fourth thing. And the Bible says and he prayed to God always. Number four. These are the things that attracted God to Cornelius. Number four the Bible says he prayed to God always. The Bible does not say he prayed on Sunday. The Bible does not say he prayed once a week. The Bible says he prayed always. Every season you don't pray you give that season to the devil. The Bible says pray without ceasing. That means you should stay in a state of prayer. Prayer is not just audible. You can pray in the heart. Your mind and that is why it says the Bible says uh, that your mind may be renewed because your thoughts can become prayer. Eh, bwana asifiwe. Your thoughts can become prayer. If your your thoughts are proper, you are not thinking wrong thoughts. You are thought the way you think good things about God, good things about people. It is a state of prayer. The Bible says pray without ceasing. He was a man who prayed always. Eh, hey, bwana asifiwe. Prayer is communication. Ni kama hivi. For any marriage to succeed, there needs to be communication. Is that not true? You need to be talking every day. How are you doing? How did you wake up? How did you sleep? How was your day? That is communication. Prayer is communication to God. That is how you are able to interact with God every day. You are able to tell him where I was today. The Bible says he prayed always. I remember there is a story that I I heard and it was concerning a man. They were saying that this man had stayed with the wife for many many years. And after living with the wife for so many years, he reached a point he saw another woman that was more beautiful than the wife. And so he started having an interest to that woman. He reached a point he thought My wife has become boring. I cannot live with her anymore. And now he went to the uh, to, to to divorce court. He came with the papers of divorce. He told the wife now, I want you to sit down. I want us to divorce. We have been married for many years. I'm getting tired of this marriage. I want us to sign uh, the the papers of divorce. The wife was very devastated. The wife said Why are you doing this? We have lived together for too long. Why have you reached a point you want to leave me? The man said, "I don't want to hear anything else from you. Just sign the papers and we divorce." The wife told him, "I'm going to do that, but on one condition. 
I'm going to sign the documents, but on one condition. The husband said, quickly, what is the condition? The wife told him, now, listen. One month, for one month, I want you to carry me. That before you enter into your car and you drive off to your work, I want you to be carrying me from our bedroom. You go with me downstairs, you go with me outside the door, and then before you go, you get out, you get into your car, you put me down, you get into your car, and you leave. The man said, I carry you for one month. The wife said, if you want me to sign the documents, carry me for one month. The husband said, okay, I'm going to think about it. The husband went and sat down and started thinking. I want to divorce my wife. And because I don't have, I don't want so many troubles arguing I want just her to sign the documents. I, I, I'm going to agree. I'm going to carry her every day. I carry her. I go to her outside the door. I drop her. I get into my car. There is nothing much. By the way, it will take less than a minute. So I'm going to do it. The first day the man woke up the wife and told the wife, Now, I'm going, I have agreed on the agreement that I'm going to carry you for the next one month. The wife said, Good. Let us begin. The husband took the wife, even never looking at her face. He went very fast. Then the son saw the father carrying the wife. The son said, hey, dad, today you are so good. You are carrying mom. <laughs> the, <laughs> the husband was very furious. He went very fast. Put down the wife and said, okay, and got into the car and left. The wife said, thank you so much. Tomorrow we do it again. The, the husband went, did his work. In the morning, the wife was already even stretching up. Uh, you know, you are carrying me even today. The husband said, I know, you don't have to tell me. He picked the wife again. He went out of the door. The son saw them again. The son started jumping. Hey, 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 my dad is carrying my mom. This is so good. The husband, never even looking at the wife, put him, her down, got into the car and left. The third day, came. Even he did not ask the wife uh, to be ready. He just picked her up. He said, today is the third day. I'm picking you up. But this time, instead of not looking at her, for the first time, she looked at her when she was carrying, when he was carrying her. He noted, my wife has gray hair. Hey, you know the first time in honeymoon, when I carried her, she didn't have gray hair. So he went with and put her down. That was the, far, the third day. The fourth day came. He carried the, her, the wife. Again, he looked at her. He noticed something else that he had not seen for a long time. Hey, my wife has wrinkles. My goodness. When I married her, she didn't have them. He carried her, put her there. When he's driving to work, he says, wow. You mean I have stayed with my wife for that long? Even she has developed wrinkles? The fifth day, as she continued carrying her, she noted the eyes are not strong as they were. The eyes have become dim. They have become more weak. Every day, as she carried her, she started remembering, I'm the one who has spent years with this woman. By me, she has gone gray, she have gotten gray hair. By me, she has gotten wrinkles. Her hands have weared out because of cleaning my clothes. So she, uh, oh, she has invested her life in my life. So one day she went to the lady that she had seen outside the marriage. We call them here in Kenya Mpangoa. On the 30th day, when she finished carrying the wife, he finished carrying the wife, he went to Mpangoa Kando. He told them Mpangoa Kando, listen. I have not seen you having gray hair with me. By the way, I have not seen any wrinkles with you over the years. I have just known you for a short while. And I have started loving my wife again. I think the plans I had to divorce her, I'm canceling them. And I don't want to see you again. This is the end between me and you. Now listen, the story has not ended. Because there is something I want you to get. The husband went and prepared and he said, today I'm going to see my wife. I'm going to go with flowers. 
I'm going to go with presents. I'm going to give her, uh, I'm going to tell her we are going to go out, eat together as we used to eat together. I'm going and treat her, I'm going to kneel before her and ask her to forgive me. Tell her I'm sorry because I've spent many years with her, yet I did not see them for a while. That day he went, he bought many flowers, he bought many gifts. He came home early that day. It was the 30th day of carrying his wife. And he, in his heart he was saying, I'm going in Anda Kurarua Yare Makratasi a divorce. When he arrived home, he went calling on his wife, climbing the stairs. Honey, I'm here. There is something I want to tell you. When he went into the bedroom, he saw the wife sleeping. But when he went ne near the, the wife, he noted she was not sleeping. She had died. She was dead. He was so beaten down. He said, what happened to my wife? When she, he's looking for something uh, to call and to call the people to come, he noted when he pulled her drawer, there were papers there, papers that were piled up. And there were medical reports about the wife. She had been suffering with cancer over years. But because he had reached a point he was not communicating with the wife, the wife never told him, I'm having cancer, I'm dying. Then he found a letter there. The letter stated, my husband, I wanted to spend the last month with you, carried in your hands, because I have adored you over the years. I have loved on you over the years. But communication between me and you broke. I couldn't tell you that I'm suffering. I couldn't tell you I have cancer. But now my time, I did not want to spend my time alone. I want to spend my last moment in the earth with you. The husband broke down and cried. And that story that I'm giving you today, it is a good story of teaching you the reason for you to pray. God has a burden. God, every time when he looks in the earth, he is seeing men and women who are suffering. But how can he give you that burden if you're not talking to him? How can he tell you there is a man in Kariobangi that needs your help? There is a man who needs your prayer. There is a pastor who has been beaten down by issues of life. He needs you to stand on the gap. How can God tell you those things if you are not communicating with him? How can he come to you by night and bring you a vision if you don't even spend five minutes before him? You don't spend 30 minutes before him. Your communication with your maker has broken. You cannot carry the burden of God. And so today, as Cornelius did, the Bible says he prayed always. He prayed. He went before God. He sought after God. He cried unto God. And so because of doing that, the Bible says God and the heavens notice there is a man here on earth who deserves a visitation. Can you turn to somebody and tell them you deserve a visitation? But that is only if you pray, you have become devoted. Let me finish. Because I see my time is over. The Bible says in verse 4, verse 3, About the ninth hour of the day, he saw clearly in the vision an angel coming in and saying to him, Colnerius, for the first time though he was a Gentile, because he had grown, he had matured, he had spent time in devotion before God, he had become an easy giver, he had reached a point whereby he was a prayerful person. He feared God with his household. He had matured to a point now God could send an angel to him. Hey, And then when the angel came to him, he said, listen. Listen verse, verse 4. And when he observed him, he was afraid. That is, Cornelius was afraid and said, what is it, Lord? So he said to him, your prayers and your arms have come to up, have come up for a memorial before God. When you mature before God, you build a memorial in heaven. You know what is a memorial? If you walk in Nairobi, there are memorials that have been put in place. One for this man, one for that politician, one for that somebody who fought for independence. There is a memorial for them in Nairobi. When you become mature, when you seek after God in prayer, when you are a giver, when you become a devoted man, you build a memorial in heaven. There is something that looks like you in heaven. That when they are passing by. Because the Bible says you have built a memorial. Your prayers, your arms. They have come up in heaven like a memorial. And so when God looks into the memorial, he remembers you. 
How many of us in heaven, there is something that looks like you? The only thing that looks like you is complaining. The prayers of God, I'm going to leave you. If you don't do this, I'm giving you an ultimatum. The only thing, you are known in heaven. Every time they mention Jamla Kamau, the files open, oh, the man who complains. Hey, uyo, malaika wanasema, ah, Jamla Kame, he, he's a complainer. How do they know in, you in heaven? How do they know you in heaven? How do they know you there? Because they have reports about you. But those who are devoted, those who are prayerful, those who are givers, those who fear God with their household, they build up a memorial in heaven. That when that memorial is seen, they say there is a man in the earth. The Bible says there is no other man like Job in the earth. He had built himself a memorial in heaven. I pray today, me and you, that we may build a memorial in heaven. We may not be known there as adulterers. We may not be known there as proud stars. We may be known there as devout men. Men who have taught their families how to fear God. We build a memorial before him. Let me read the last, the last scripture and then we, we pray. Can you go to the uh, verse, verse 20, 28? Can you, can you imagine or oh, listen to this because it's very important. Instead of God telling Cornelius pack your things and go look for the apostles an apostle was a mighty man to be revered. He was respectable in the society in those days and even today. Instead of God telling a Gentile, get up, go to the apostle. God goes to the apostle and tells the apostle that man needs respect. You are the one who is to go to him. When you mature, God will send people to you. God will send mighty men to you. Men that are respected in the spiritual realm. You see pastors, bishops coming to your house because you have raised a memorial before God. You have matured because according to his status in the society, the apostle was not even supposed to come near him. He was not even, he was the one who was supposed because you remember Jesus saying the food of the children cannot be given to the dogs, who are the dogs? The Gentiles. But here God says, take my food. Cornelius will not come to you. You are the one to go to him. When you mature, you will eat the food of heaven. You will not eat mabaki. You will eat, unajua mabaki ni nini? Mabaki ni ile ukiomba, oh mungu naomba. Nipatie pesa. Nipatie pesa siku ya Hata kama ni mia. Badala ya una, una, ukitembea unaokota una, una hamsini pale. Unasema asante. Hiyo ni mabaki. But if you mature in God, he can send somebody and tell them, go take this brother, this amount of money. Hey, buwana asifiwe. Can I read the last, last scripture? Verse 28. The Bible says in verse 28. This is Peter speaking to Cornelius. Then he said to them, You know how unlawful it is for a Jewish man to keep company or to go to another nation. Listen, that is the apostle speaking, saying, Listen to us, listen to me, Cornelius. It is very unlawful, very unlawful to keep company with you. Leave alone, go into your house. Hey, but the Bible says. But God has shown me that I should call, I should not call any man common or unclean. Though the Jews used to call the Gentiles common, they used to call them unclean. But when you mature in God, you are not common anymore. You are not unclean anymore. When you learn how to approach God, then your name changes not only in heaven, but here on the earth. Peter says, listen, 
it is very unlawful for me to come into your house even to keep company with you but you know what god has warned me tonight god warned me that i should not call you common that i should not call you unclean i'm talking to somebody here if you grow in the lord if you mature in the things of god you stop being common anymore ile kuambiwa yule mzee wa kawaida they give you a name they say the respectable man you stop being common you stop being unclean because you have known how to approach the throne of god today i'm talking to people here who are willing to change their names that they have been called in the society they call you a woman of depths if you mature in the lord you become a giver you become a prayer you become you can change your name from being called a somebody who is a debtor to be called somebody who is not common I remember one woman I'm finishing with this they they found us we were taken somewhere in a in a hotel a five star hotel in Mombasa to swim I was a, a young boy There was a woman there who knew us and he knew our status She came and said what are these bastard children let me use that word because it is what she used doing in the swimming pool What are they doing here because she had a position there and i was told get out of the swimming i will never forget that day i went in the evening and asked that question because i did not know what that word meant i asked what does this word mean nikaelezoa vizuri nikaambua ben kuitwa hivyo ni kumaanisha wewe ni mwanaharamu nikauliza what is mwanaharamu they told me it is somebody who does not deserve any honor because of the way you were born into this world you're not born under any cover respectable home so you are mwana haramu but let me tell you something eh nikwambie kitu over the years i have respected god i have followed after him i have prayed i have sought after him my name has been changed i'm not common anymore i'm not unclean anymore because my god in heaven I have raised a memorial before him. He says you are not common. You are not going to be called by that name again. You are not be going to be called unclean anymore because of raising a memorial. How many have raised a memorial here?